In this lesson, we're going to be looking at these two questions over here. So as with the previous lesson, if you want to pause now and attempt the questions yourself, I have given you the answers over there. Otherwise, you can just sit back and do the question together with me. So we're going to start with number one. So remember, any angle bigger than 200, you typically want to reduce that. When wouldn't you do that? Well, you wouldn't reduce it if you were given something like this. Sin 200 times by the cos of 120 minus the sin of 120 times by the cos of 200. Why? Because then it's a sin cos, sin cos, which is a, so it's obviously the bracket's going to become sin, and then we minus, so it's going to be 200 minus 120, which is the sin of 80. So it would be better to just do that. But in this type of question, there's no way that we can really link these two together. And so we simplify or we reduce each part separately first using grade 11 knowledge. We know that the sin of 200 is, well, 200 is the same as 180 plus 20. Remember, the goal is to always write it as either 180 minus something, 180 plus something, or 360 minus something because then we know what the answer is because we know from grade 11 knowledge that the sin of 180 plus anything is just the negative sin of that thing sorry 20 why do I say negative because sin is negative in that quadrant so sin of 200 is just the same as the negative of sin 20 now cos 160 we know that 160 is the same as 180 minus 20. And we know that that's this quadrant over here. So that just becomes the negative of cos 20. Negative because cos is a negative in that quadrant. So that's negative cos 20. Now what you need to notice, and I hope by now you're, you're starting to pick this up. There's a 10, and there's a 10, and then there's a 30. And there's a 30. So we on to something over here. So what we do is we look at our formula sheet and we see, okay, well, it's a sin and a cos and a sin and a cos. And there's a plus in between. So that is the sin A plus B. Okay. So what we're going to have is sin. And then A will just be 10 and B will be 30. So that's 10 plus 30, which is 40. Then I just want to quickly show you that a negative multiplied by a negative is just a positive. So we can cancel those out. So this is what we have at the moment, sin 20, cos 20. I then told you in the previous lesson that you should start realizing that if you have a sin and a cos next to each other, and the angle is the same, then you need to be thinking about this double angle identity over here, which is on your formula sheet. Okay. So what we have is this part over here. So I'm just going to replace it with sin of 20 times cos 20. Then what we don't have is the 2. And okay, so now 2a. Well, our a is a 20. So 2 times a would be 40. So that's the part that we don't have. So what we can do is we can get this part by itself. So that's going to be sin 20 times by cos 20 is equal to sin 40 over 2. Then don't divide the 40 and the 2 because the one is a number, like a coefficient, and the other one is an angle, so they can't go together. So what we can say is that the top part, which is the sin 20 cos 20, which is that over there, that's going to just be equal to sin 40 over 2, or another way to write that is the half sin 40. Oh, and by the way, guys, sometimes I'll put brackets around the angle, sometimes I won't. Technically, I should be doing it each time, but yeah, sometimes I do forget. And then at the bottom, we just have sin of 40. Then all that we do is realize that these two are the same, and so we're left with a half. Moving on to number two. So with number two, the first thing you want to realize is you don't want to say, oh, that's sin 2x, or that's cos 2x. I know that those can be expanded. You've got to think even more simply than that. When you see the following, what I see is a fraction minus a fraction. So if we have a fraction like 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3 or minus, it doesn't really matter, you need the same common denominator. So our common denominator is going to be sin x cos x. Okay? That means that we're going to have to multiply this piece here by cos x, and we're going to have to multiply this piece here by sin x. So what we're going to end up with is sin 2x 
times cos x, see, because that's just multiplied there, minus cos 2x times sin x. And then we can write it over the common denominator, which is sin x times cos x. What I've effectively done is I've gone from having 1, 2, so two terms, to one big term like that. You see, that's what simplifying is. Before you even see the different expansions, get a common denominator. Now what I start noticing is I have a 2x and a 2x, and then I have an x and an x. So that's almost like a compound angle expansion. Normally it goes sin cos, sin cos, but this is this part here is sin cos. But when you're multiplying, the order doesn't matter because 5 times 3 is 15 and 3 times 5 is also 15. So order doesn't matter. So I can rearrange that expression as sin x in the front if it makes you feel better and cos 2x. And let me just put a little bracket over there over the sin x times cos of x. So yes, we see that there is now a double angle where it's a sin cos, sin cos. So that's going to become sin. And sin always uses the, the, the sign in between. So that's a minus. So it's going to be 2x and x. Those are the two angles, a and b. And we're going to use a minus in between them. Then at the bottom, we've just got sin x times cos x. Now 2x minus x, that's just x, and so that's just going to be sin x over sin x cos x. The sins cancel, and so you're just left with 1 over cos x.